You will find Mancrick in the crossroads, like usual, and he will start the quest Lost in Battle. They came in the middle of the night. A stampede of them. Vile, terrible creatures, the centaur are. I fled from my village and came here for sanctuary. My wife, Nadia, was not so fortunate. They took her to one of their camps to the south near the stagnant oasis. I fear the worst, but I must know. Please see if you can find any clues in their tents and bring her back if you can. Slaughter any centaur in your path. So the new quest objectives for this quest, rather than going and discovering the mangled corpse of Mancrick's wife, is to discover what happened to Nadia and report your findings back to Mancrick at the crossroads. So I will cut away and here I am back just outside the stagnant oasis where we will be killing these Kolkar centaurs and where we will need to find uh, clue number one. So you'll see in the quest objective tracker there are three clues uh, we have to find for this quest and the clues come in the form of these captured refugee mobs or NPCs I should say. Uh, so the first one is in this very big tent kind of near where Vrog the Dervish uh, normally spawns and we talk to him. And I will ask him, I seek the one named Nadia. And he replies, Nadia? The name is not familiar, but a few nights ago there was a disturbance in the camps further south. Perhaps you should check there. So that was clue number one. So like he said, if we continue further south, just outside of this large tent, and you can see uh, to my right is where Varag the Dervish normally spawns. Uh, we're just going to go a little bit further uh, south from there. Now, the cold car report that I just opened up and that quest I accepted in my bag is another new, brand new quest uh, in the Barons that uh, the devs implemented in Project Epoch. It's uh, just a one-off quest. The cold car report, we have to turn it in to Thork at the crossroads, and it's just for a little bit of extra experience and, I think, money. Uh, so if we come over here to this little camp where we will find usually cold car marauders and pack runners and all that, there is a second captured refugee, and we ask her, have you seen a female orc? And she will tell us, I heard one of my fellow captives mention something about a rebellion in one of the camps further south of here. You should check there. Because uh, I was heading to the wrong spot, but I'll show you exactly where you can find the third and final captured refugee for clue number three. We're out here a little further on the outskirts of all the different Kolkar Centaur camps. There are, a f uh, there are a lot of them around here, but it is a troll captured refugee. Have you seen an orc named Nadia? Nadia, she was in my camp, but there was an uprising a few nights ago, and she escaped. Do you know where she went? I was knocked out early into the fight by a centaur. I am sorry, I don't know where she went. So now we have all three clues found. I am heading back to Camp Taraho to fly back to uh, the crossroads and turn these quests in, so I will cut away and see you guys down there. So back here at the X roads, and the first thing I will do is turn the cold car report into Thork that I picked up and he will tell us what news do you bring me Thork reads the note carefully this is a report from a Kolkar leader the centaur are planning to attack the crossroads thank you for this information I will take precautionary measures to prevent the attack and now we will turn in the quest to Mancrick she escaped perhaps there is hope she is alive we must hurry if we are to find her safely and the follow-up is a quest called searching the wreckage so she escaped the village why has Nadia not come here Perhaps she does not know where I am. In that case, we must find her. She must have returned to our village, thinking I would be there. Please, go to my village and search for her. Follow the road north. Then, at the fork, turn right. Go south down the shoreline where this land meets Durator. There you will find our village, and hopefully Nadia. Alright, so the quest objectives this time around are search Mancrick's village for signs of Nadia, and then return to Mancrick at the crossroads. And on our way out, we can stop at this wanted poster and pick up another brand new quest that the Project Epoch devs have implemented called Wanted Deepskin. Many adventurers have fallen prey to this particularly aggressive crocolisk. He roams the river bordering the barrens in Duratar. Bring one of his fangs to Thork in the crossroads as proof of his death. So very close to the Duratar and Barrens border where you historically turn in the first part of the quest, Conscript of the Horde, to Cargill Battlescar, is where you will find this newly renamed subzone Mancrick's village. All you have to do is wander inside of it, you will find no NPCs, and you will have completed the quest searching the wreckage. And next I will cut away again and you will see me fighting Deepskin, an elite crocolisk for the quest Wanted Deepskin. Now, little info about where you can find this mob. Uh, this crocolisk will patrol all the way up and down the entire river, all the way from 
pretty much close to Ratchet all the way up towards Orgrimmar. Now obviously, as a level 30, taking on a level 14 elite is no skin off my back, a pretty easy fight, but when you're also a level 14, a level 13, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, minimum level requirement is for this quest, it might be pretty hard to take on deep skin uh, solo, so just watch out. I don't think he had any special abilities in particular that I can remember, uh, but he does swim all the way up the South Fury River, all the way up and down, and he is just a big white crocolisk who hits very hard. He didn't drop anything noteworthy other than the Fang, which you obviously need to complete the quest Wanted Deep Skin. And the rewards for the quest are actually quite good for its level. We have Cloth Caster Gear Chest Piece, Leather Leggings with Agi and Attack Power on them, and then there are Male Bracers with Stamina and Plus Defense. So now that both of those quests are done, I will cut away again and head back to the crossroads. First things first, let's go ahead and talk to Thork, and we will turn in Wanted Deep Skin to him. Wonderful work! These lands will be safer with the beast put down. And then heading back over to Mancrick, we will turn in the quest Searching the Wreckage. There is no sign of her? I do not know where she could have been then. This is out of my hands. We must get help from somebody else. And for this, we get the Worn Leather Tunic. A leather chest piece with Agi and Sam on it, very good for its level. And the follow-up is out of my hands. There is nothing more we can do to find her. We must seek outside help. I am still confident she is alive because the captives you questioned said she escaped. I have heard tales of a shaman named Shin Zil that has given aid to the people of these parts. He lives just a little bit north of this town, by the fork in the road. Go, talk to him and see if he can help us find Nadia. And the quest objective is to track down the Shinzil in the Barrens. So you will find Shinzil's hut just next to the watchtower where the road from the crossroads meets the fork that leads to Duratar. You'll be needing help finding someone, Mon. I might be able to help with that. We be needing a few things, though. Aye, I can help you, Mon, but we need some things to begin the ritual so that we can center in on Nadia's location. The only thing that be powerful enough to find her is located in Northwatch Old. There is a powerful mage there that goes by the name of Archmage Korgar. His orb, the source of his power, is under constant protection. If we are to find Nadia, we be needing that orb. You be finding Northwatch Old just south of Rochetmon. But you best be mindful. The guards don't take kindly to strangers. Okay, putting aside how cringe that troll accent might have sounded i apologize to anyone <laughs> for the cultural appropriation i love trolls we love trolls here we're all very pro troll here all right so getting back to the actual quest retrieving the orb you will find archmage korgar in the main tower in north watch hold where you will also find captain fairmont so I highly recommend only coming here when you are about level 15, 16, 17 are probably appropriate levels. And also come here with the quest, the Guns of Northwatch. You can do both of these basically at the same time. They're almost like companion quests. And you will have to fight your way all the way up to the top of the tower, to the top floor. And other than all of the patrolling Theramore Marines, you will find Archmage Korgar by his lonesome should be a 1v1 situation he won't pull other mobs in the room and with that i will head back to shinzil to turn this quest in did you retrieve the orb excellent mon now we can continue with the ritual this be the orb we looking for mon but now that we have the orb we need to infuse it with the power of nature far south past the crossroads lies packs of thunder lizards that look similar to kodos we need to harness their essence and infuse it into the orb, while they be alive for the most potent power. After you do that, return to me so that we may complete the ritual. Quest's objective is now to siphon five essence of lightning into Korgar's orb and return to Shinzil. Now for this particular quest, I headed down just outside of Camp Taraho, or Taraho, I'm not entirely sure how people pronounce this little village. But I was doing it on the Stormsnout mobs, 
and at first I thought you had to uh, get these mobs down to a certain percentage of health, usually with these quests uh, in, uh, from Vanilla WoW, the Blizzard like quests, you need to get mobs to like 20% health or so, and then use the item on it. But then eventually, as I kept continuing along doing this quest, I found that you don't actually have to get them down to any percentage of health. You can even use the orb on these mobs when they're at full health. And you will notice they will get the debuff siphoned uh, when you do use uh, the orb, Korgar's orb, and, and siphon their uh, essence of lightning. So you can only tag one mob uh, every two minutes. Which means if you're doing this quest, you don't even have to kill these storm snouts. You can just siphon their essence and then run away from them. So uh, you need five essence of lightnings, and uh, we will return back to Shinzil. Have you infused the orb? We must. If we wish to find Nadia. Perfect, Mon. We may begin the ritual. Let us begin the ritual, Mon. And Shinzo will step down from his hut. Walk out here. I will now zone in on Nadia's location. I am beginning to get a vision. Her location will soon be revealed. I see her. She is surrounded by Bristleback. Let me concentrate more on her location. I got it, Mon. Southwest of the Lushwater Oasis is a tribe of Bristleback. You will find her there, alive. And now once Shinzo walks back up to his hut, he will be ready to talk to us again and give us a quest report to Mancrick. We found her, Mon. Remember, southwest of the Lushwater Oasis is a Bristleback village. It is there you will find her. Waste no time. Go tell Mancrick the news. Also, if anyone else at the crossroads be needing help, please send them my way. Report to Mancrick at the crossroads with the news of Nadia's location. For this particular quest, there are two rewards you can choose from. One of them being not too shabby. <laughs> uh, the sword, old shabby, with strength and agility. Or the spellcaster's or I should say Runecaster's staff with intellect and spirit on it. Brizzleback, eh? Good work. We are close to finding her. We are so close to finding her. I am familiar with the area Shinzil told you about. It is called Agamagor, and many Brizzleback dwell there. You will find it southwest of the Lushwater Oasis. I am counting on you. Please bring my beloved Nadia back to me. So the quickest way to get there, if you have the flight path to Camp T, is to fly down to Camp T. And I will show you the exact location where we will find Nadia, spoiler alert, alive. But first, I wanted to show you a fight against a brand new elite rare mob that the Project Epoch devs have added into the game. This is Melman. A reference to the film Madagascar, of course, the animated film. This is a level 25 rare elite giraffe. And uh, I'll be honest, I was level 30, uh, but this dude had a lot of health. And he was kind of kicking my ass towards the end here. Um, got me down to about 30% health, I want to say. Uh, and he does have a specific gear drop uh, every time I've killed him. Uh, is the Oasis Regalia, a cloth chest piece with intellect. And seven nature resist. Now, I'll be honest, the stats on this are pretty underwhelming for when you actually do uh, or are able to kill a level 25 elite. Uh, just intellect and nature resist, no stamina, no spirit. So, I will say uh, it's very cool that they have added in a bunch of rare elite mobs, but the uh, the stats on that probably need a little a little upgrade. But we will find Nadia here within this little camp. Surrounded by Bristleback, caged up, locked up, and we will talk to her, finding Nadia. I am so glad you are here. I have been trapped here many days, and I thought all hope was lost. I am so glad you're here. Many days have I been trapped here, lost, waiting, but I think I know a way out. I have observed their leader from time to time. They call him Gortak. He always comes from a Bristleback village northwest of here. I'll bet anything he has the key to my cage. But be careful, he looks a lot tougher than the others. You might need some friends to take him on. As the quest text suggests, Gortak is a level 21 elite bristleback. Obviously, as a level 30, a level 21 is, again, no match for me. But as you're questing here throughout the barrens, 
uh, from starting out level 11 or 12 or even 10 and continuing all the way through your 20s, uh, he might be a bit of a challenge for you. I don't think he had any special abilities from what I can tell. All you have to do is kill him. He does drop Gortex Key. Didn't see any other sort of loot table on him. And then we can go back and turn this quest into Nadia. Have you recovered the key? What can I do for you? Unlock this cage and let's get out of here. And when the cage opens and she steps out, ah, oh, it feels good to be out of that cage. And she doesn't actually aggro any other mobs, luckily. Um, but if you do want to talk to her again for the follow-up quest, you might have to clear out this area um, once again. The good news is the final quest. Tell Mancrick at the crossroads of Nadia's escape. I know the way to the crossroads from here. Go on ahead and speak with Mancrick. And so this is the final quest in the entire chain, the good news. I cannot begin to express my gratitude. Thank you so much for all your help. I have been reunited with my dearest Nadia thanks to you. Even though our home is destroyed and our future uncertain, what matters is that we are now together. Never lose sight of what you have, my friend, because you will miss it when it's gone. And the three quest rewards we can choose from at level 20 probably when you're getting this quest done for the first time are trinkets oh my god project epoch devs love horde so much they give us trinkets around level 20. uh the minimum level required for this quest is probably a bit lower like 15 if i had to guess 14 or 15. so you could conceivably get trinkets even lower than 20 but uh, i'm just using 20 as a reference because you do have to kill a level 21 elite but they are the Talisman of the Protector, the Talisman of the Sorcerer, and the Talisman of the Warrior. Talisman of the Protector on use will increase your maximum health by 100 for 20 seconds with a 15 minute cooldown. Honestly, this might be the weakest of the three trinkets. 100 health is really not that much. At level 20, sure, but at level even 25, you've pretty much out leveled that. You can think of it as like a health pot. 100 health for 20 seconds. Every 15 minutes, not that good. Talisman of the Sorcerer restores 30 mana every one second for 10 seconds. So this is basically uh, restores 300 mana over a 10 second period. This will be the obvious choice for pretty much every caster tune playing on this server. Even though it's essentially a glorified mana pot with a 15 minute cooldown, it is pretty cool that you get a trinket at such a low level. And lastly, we have Talisman of the Warrior. Your attack power is increased by 60. Every second this bonus is reduced by three last 20 seconds with again a 15 minute cooldown. So you start with a plus 60 attack power bonus and then it goes from 60 to 57 to 54 to 51, etc., etc., all the way um, for its 20 second duration. Now this reward is the obvious choice for every non-caster tune in the game. Even at level 31 with pretty good uh, gear starting out that this tune got, uh, my attack power was 218, so on use already, this was a plus 30% bonus to my attack power, even at level 31. So it'll be interesting to see if the devs go back and take a look at these different trinkets. Maybe they buff Talisman of the Protector a little bit, maybe they nerf this one a little bit, because again, it is a pretty strong trinket uh, that you can get at level 20. Even at level 30, it's a good trinket. Even at level 40, it'll still be a good trinket. This this will honestly carry you probably all the way until 60. All in all, I think it's just very cool that uh, the devs have implemented a quest chain like this. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was kind of similar to the Rumbles Over the Earth quest chain uh, that I recorded before. And I wanted to um, talk about this quest chain that all Horde will get to do and experience. Um, starting around uh, the, the mid tens all the way through the 20s, this quest chain will last you throughout the Barrens. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and I did enjoy playing on the beta very much. Hope you guys get to play on this server when it's finally fully launched. They might have another beta later this year, I think was the plan, but I don't know uh, exactly what is happening with that. So with that all being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, as always, I hope y'all stay classy and peace out.